Hello. In my last video, I went over how to install and configure the OpenFire chat server. There was one piece that I forgot to put in that video, though, and that is how to configure the firewall on Windows Server to allow OpenFire communication to, to pass through it. Uh, it's a very important step that I completely omitted, uh, so I'm doing the second video to walk you through how to do that real quick. So jumping back on the server, uh, this is the same server that I used for the video demonstration in my, my previous video. Um, what we need to do is go into the firewall and permit XMPP traffic um, through the firewall. So I'm going to start by opening the Windows firewall with advanced security. Okay, so um, as we can see, the firewall is turned on. Um, I'm going to have to go to inbound rules and create a rule for open fire. So a lot of software, when you install it, it will actually create a firewall rule for you to permit traffic from that application. Um, in this particular case, um, open fire does not do that by default on install. So we're going to have to go in here and create a new rule. So once we get the firewall open, we're going to go up to inbound rules right here, right? Because the chat client is going to be initiating a connection uh, from a different machine to this server. So we want to permit inbound traffic. We're going to hit new rule, click on port, and then we're going to specify TCP, and it's going to be port 5222. 5222 is the XMPP default port. Um, any traffic inbound on that port, we're going to allow the connection. Now, depending on uh, what domain profile you're using, you may uh, specify one of these specific categories. I'm going to make this rule apply to all connections. And I'm going to name this rule XMPP. As you can see here at the top, we have our rule. It's allowing traffic incoming TCP 5222. One other thing that you might want to do for testing purposes, um, Windows Server by default uh, does not permit echo replies, which means if you were to ping this server, you would not get a response. So that can be um, frustrating if you're trying to identify if there's a problem with your client connection or, or what have you. Um, if you can't ping it, then you don't know that you're actually able to hit the server. So these rules already exist. You can see here, file and printer sharing echo request ICMP version 4 in. Um, this rule is not enabled because there's not a little green uh, check mark next to it. So we're just going to click on that and enable the rule. That will allow echo requests in through the firewall and allow the server to respond to it. And then if we go down a little farther, there is another echo request setting, and that's for virtual machine monitoring. This one's not strictly a requirement, but in my virtual environment, I do like to have it turned on so that my environment can ping this machine uh, to verify connectivity. Um, but that is all. Uh, the only setting you really need for XMPP to function is that rule right there that we just created, and then your client should be able to connect to the server without any issues. Thanks for watching.